After four rotations, Neil Palmer still with the lead, but David St. Pierre made a move on the parallel bars in the third rotation to move just, well, a five one hundredths of a point away from Neil Palmer. Chuck Gerardo right now has to be the surprise story, Bart Connor. And there you see Ryan Bowers, Chaplin, and Kirksey. And Robert Sundstrom had problems on the high bar in the fourth rotation. So he right now is off the leaderboard, but Gerardo is really the story right now. He really is having a terrific meet. He looks more aggressive and more confident than I've ever seen him. He's charging through his routines. On the parallel bars, he was in a little bit of trouble, losing it in a handstand, and he's fighting, and he's showing a lot of really good determination. Over to the parallel bars now is Mike Farina. Mike is 19th after the first four rotations. A promising young gymnast. He'll be a freshman at the University of Minnesota this fall. Well, Mike, let's do it, buddy. Competed in his first senior nationals meet just last month in Kansas City. There's a move called a peach to a straddle cut. Oh, that's a cool move. He missed it a little bit. I don't even know what you call that. I think it's a straily with a half turn. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> what he needs to do on this event is more big swinging elements. He needs to get up in that handstand like he is now and swing some nice long movements. He's very choppy and has a, uh, a very quick swing. I think he needs to be a little more fluid on that. He's only been in gymnastics for a few years. He only began his freshman and sophomore years in high school. Now, Chuck Girardo, 20 years old, from San Diego, California, on the Stanford team, preparing now for the high bar. Right now, he is in third place but not far behind St. Pierre and Palmer after four rotations. This is definitely a critical event for Chuck because at the U.S. Championships just a month ago, he scored an only an 8.75 here, so he did have trouble. His brother ja Jamie is a gymnast at Penn State. It runs in the family for a lot of these competitors. We've got third generation athletes here in the sport of gymnastics in many cases, both for the men and the women. We'll notice that throughout the rest of the uh, U.S. Olympic Festival. Most of these competitions come down to the last couple of events, and it's who can hang on to the high bar on one of these big high-flying release moves. And we have a judges' conference underway. Michael Chaplin was just on the high bar moments ago. And that's the man for whom responsible at the latest discussion. The high bar has been a problem piece of apparatus here so far, Bart Connor. Well, just about in every gymnastics competition, the level of difficulty that the gymnasts are doing, the high-flying release moves are very risky elements. Uh, not only uh, are, are they risky to uh, life and limb sometimes, but... Uh, to your score as well, because a fall off the high bar, of course, is a half a point deduction, and yet you cannot score well unless you do the big moves. So here we go. First of all, he does really nice work in the stalder position, or straddle giant swings. And now here we go, one arm giant swing, two in a row, nice sequence. There's a move called a jam to inverted giant swings, a stalder. Okay, now there's the release move. A nice high ginger. Good clean rhythm. Good form. And he speeds up with his dismount. Okay, a right out double backflip. Nice exercise, an important one for him to get through. It can't hurt him at all. Remember, in third place behind Palmer and St. Pierre after four rotations, Chuck Girardo, a gold medal winner back at the festival in Baton Rouge in 85. You can see here with the hand guards that gymnasts are wearing that leather strap actually has a dowel rod out at the end so that they can get sort of a hook action so they can hang on to the bar on those inverted giant swings. Here's the dismount, the laid out double backflip. He lets go, keeps his body stretched, really nice position in the air. And one short hop on the landing. Patrick Kirksey now preparing for his floor exercise. Kirksey in eighth place after the first four rotations. There you see his total. Now 
out of Decatur, Georgia, representing the East team. He's the man that we saw early, early on with the uh, meditation process. He closes his eyes and visualizes his performance. Okay, here we go. Front step out, round up back handspring, nice high full punch front. Now that's the kind of tumbling pass that's very clean and very high. It's not uh, the type of tumbling pass that you'd really like to start your exercise with. Now that's more of the stuff. That was a handspring, front one and three quarter front flip. Nice work on a straddle leap. Clean form. He's really solid on his landings. That's a nice clean double twist. The unfortunate thing about the mount on this exercise is it is a D move, a full to a punch front. But it's probably one of the easiest D moves, and so most of the gymnasts use it. I'd like to see them do more difficult elements at the beginning of his exercise. Elements like the one that he did in his second tumbling run, the one and three quarter front flip. There's a requirement now. That's a new requirement where the gymnasts must do a balance on one foot or one hand throughout the exercise somewhere. And the last tumbling run, nice tuck double back. That's a good finish. A very strong finish for that exercise. Making that difficult transition, Patrick Kirksey from the junior team to the national team and the senior team. That's what he has in front of him now. And he's on his way. He's eighth after four rotations. Neil Palmer, our leader now. Over to the parallel bars, entering his senior year at the University of Nebraska, 22 years old. Horizontal bar, All-American in 1985 at the NCAA level. But now it's the parallel bars facing Neil Palmer. He's our leader after four rotations. He has a unique mount here. He's starting on the end of the parallel bars, way out of, out the end. And that's a peach to a straddle cut. Straddle L on one rail. Now look at that, double leg circles on the end with flares. Really nice combination. Swing to a handstand. Now he needs to travel into the, edge, into the center of the parallel bars. Oh, nice. Diamondoff right on the end of the bars. That Diamondoff is a very difficult move, and it's especially difficult when you do it out there on the end. Okay, that was a Healy twirl. It looked like he clipped his heel on that. Might have a minor deduction for hitting the rail just slightly, but he didn't break form, and so far this routine is really nice. There's a nice, clean, full twisting back foot. Oh, yeah. And you know, he had some moves that were reminiscent of the pommel horse, only on the parallel bars. Now Absolutely. look at the dismount part. This is uh, the handstand pirouette right here at the end. You can see he's gonna let go of the bars, do a backflip, one, full turn and spot the landing. Not the most difficult dismount being done, but a really nice looking dismount. He's a saxophonist, but right now he's tooting a big horn at the gymnastics and men's all around here in North Carolina, the home of the Tar Heels. Here is David St. Pierre. This is definitely a very excellent event for David. He has a style that reminds us very much of Peter Vidmar. In fact, he was trained with the same coach that Peter Vidmar had. Here comes the release move. A nice reverse heck. Perfect position as he swung. Excellent giant swings out of it. Now watch this. one arm giant swings through to a gander. Excellent. He's very aggressive on the high bar. He's probably not as strong as he needs to be. He needs to get a little more developed in the upper body. But when he's on the high bar, he is very aggressive. His style is excellent. There's a laid out double back to... Big. We'll only have to wait to find out if, in fact, he is now our leader after five rotations. He didn't hurt himself there at all. David St. Pierre, a member of the UCLA National Championship team. Now, here's the one arm giant swings through to a ginger. He is up there. Look at that, completely out of camera. Probably at that point, he's in the air about 14, 15 feet off the ground. And of course, then he casts back up into giant swings and an excellent body position on a layout double back, and boy, when you land one like that, let me tell you, that feels good. And these aren't the flying Wallindas. These are the best juniors and perhaps seniors of the future that we're seeing here at the gymnastics competition. Stay with us. 
The men's gymnastics all-around competition underway at the Dean Smith Activity Center on the campus of the University of North Carolina. Tim Brando along with Bart Connor. Lance Rignall, what a story he is, and right now he's on the high bar. Lance is a really aggressive performer, especially on this piece of equipment. There's a full over the bar, full twisting pirouette, nice one-arm giant swings. Okay, here's the release sequence. Reverse hops, two in reverse hops, two in a row. It's a nice combination. He's back up into giant swings. That was actually an extra giant swing. I didn't think he needed in there. There's the inverted giant swings. So far, he has all the necessary requirements. Let's see the dismount. Laid out, full out, and a hop on the landing, but that's a really difficult dismount. He began flipping when he was only nine years old. He was in a car accident, and we'll document that a bit later. Robert Sundstrom now on the floor exercise, and he had problems on the high bar. He has to regather himself now, Bart. You know, oh, what a nice move. That was a triple twist for a mount. Backed up with three twists. He just dropped out of the sky on that. Your second tumbling run, handspring, layout, punch front. He is definitely the favorite in the individual event finals for the floor exercise title as well as the vaulting title. He is really an expert tumbler and vaulter. It's unfortunate in the all-around competition, the event just prior to this, he took a 7.6 on a disastrous high bar performance, which took him out of the running in the all-around, but certainly he's doing a heck of a job here on the floor. The exercise so far has been absolutely perfect. Whip back through the double full punch front. Really nice combination tumbling. He's so comfortable on the floor. He looks like he's unchallenged by the routine, and yet he's doing some of the most difficult elements that you can do in floor exercise. Okay, here's the last run. Tuck double back. Nice, a little over-rotated, but really high in the air. I'd say he regathered himself, Bart. Very much so. Robert Sundstrom with an outstanding score of 9.80 in the floor exercise. And we'll continue with our all-around competition. This Stay with us. competition in round five. Our athletes will now move to the sixth and final rotation. Golf, the sports festival tomorrow, a big Friday. It's a two-man race in the men's all-around. David St. Pierre with a slim lead over Neil Palmer. Lance Rignald is in third along with Chuck Gerardo, the upstarts, plus the experienced veterans in one-two. And the rest of the men's all-around competition continues here at the U.S. Olympic Festival. Patrick Kirksey is in fifth. Mark Bowers, Trent Demas, and Tim Ryan make out the rest of the field that are at the very top here in the men's all-around. Sixth and final rotation underway. Tim Brando along with Bart Conner. And Bart, we talked about it at the top, experience as well as youth. And we've seen both come to the forefront. And, and without a doubt, guys like Neil Palmer, like who's getting ready to perform on the high bar. He and David St. Pierre are two more experienced performers, and without a doubt, that's why they're in the lead right now, because they're really handling the competition. They're very aggressive, and they're doing all the important elements that you need to score well, and they're not faltering in this competition. He's done no worse than a 9-2-0. That was on the vault, but after the magnificent performance that we saw just a few moments ago by David St. Pierre, he just was edged out after five rotations, but he certainly has a great shot because of this particular piece of apparatus. Oh, yeah. Neil is really, really great on the high bar. You'll notice when you see him up there, he has that long swing, and he does some really nice elements, a big release move and an excellent dismount. In Kansas City at the McDonald's Championships of the United States, he finished 11th on the high bar. We've already chronicled this past at the University of Nebraska. Here we go. Okay, there's a backup rise. Back stalder, half turn. Okay, look at that. Front one-arm giant. Back one-arm giant to a finger. Really nice combination. There's a stoop and a jam right to the top. Really clean work on the inverted giant swings going to come down to whether he sticks this dismount. Speed on the Giants. A full out. Ah! That's going to 
going to score big time. That could be a gold medal performance on the high bar. And we have to wait on St. Pierre, but Neil Palmer has to love his chances.